Hey, John with a conversation that matters for April 16th, 2017. Wanted to review a book that I loved called John C. Calhoun, American Portrait by Margaret L. Coit. It is a great read. It is articulate, it is accurate, it is applicable. How's that for alliteration? It is articulate. Uh, the style is just so descriptive. You feel like you're in the room when she goes through the details of what the floor looked like and the decor. And uh, it's thorough. It's thorough in... in uh, just every facet of the event or person that you're talking about, you just feel like you know them because so many details are given. Um, there's a lot of anticipation. Uh, as you read one chapter, you just want to know, okay, what happens in the next chapter? Uh, what, what does Calhoun do to, to react to this situation? Or how does the political situation evolve? Or what about his marriage? Or It just leaves you kind of wanting to know more, which is, I think, just that's just great from a standpoint of an author. She's just a great author. And um, uh, I, I, the result of all that, I think, is that you just feel like you know John C. Calhoun at the end. I mean, I, I cried at the end. I, I just felt like I knew this guy, even though I had never met him. And uh, she takes you there. So I think that's just really good as far as um, as an author. She's just really good style. Uh, it's it's real. You, you feel like it's real. It's not a cartoon. It's not, uh, there's, it's, there's no stereotypical nonsense in it. Uh, it's real people with conflicting interests, with flaws, with strengths. Uh, to give you an example, John C. Calhoun is a genius, an absolute genius. And she really gets into, you know, why was he a genius? How can you substantiate that? What proved that? Well, there's tons of examples. Um, but yet, he couldn't understand people in a certain way. He just had trouble relating because he was, in some ways, intellectually superior. And it may seem like an arrogant thing to say, but you read the book, you understand, okay, this is the complexity of this man. His Even his strengths became weaknesses in some ways. Um, you know, you could talk about uh, the fact that he was extremely moral. Though he, he probably was not a Christian, he had a kind of a Christian background and a Calvinist background, he does not seem to have embraced, uh, embraced Orthodox Christianity. Um, however, uh, he's an extremely moral guy. And the things that are happening in Washington, D.C. with affairs and, and everything, he does not participate. He loves his wife. Yet, his wife didn't seem to really love him as much. And there's really aren't, you can't find any love letters between them. And... Um, uh, they may have been destroyed, but you know you can see in other letters he wrote how much he loved his wife, and so there's there's just a whole story involving that, and and it just shows that these are real people with real problems that we can relate to, and so I think for that reason, uh, um, it's just a great story because it's just it's not about the political situation, it's about the man, and, and you learn the political situation, but you know you're you're not just learning about stereotyping a region um, or um, the type of person Calhoun was. Because you could say, well, he's a you know a, from a rural area, and he's you know a, kind of a Scotch Irish guy in the South. You know, you could stereotype that, and she she just doesn't. He's a real person. So, uh, so there you go. It's articulate. So, the second thing though I noted is it's very accurate. Uh, the historical context is that that she gives is just I think really great. Um, you see, even with the the slavery chapter, uh, there's a whole chapter where she talks about slavery. It is just treated in such a way that it, it's fair-minded. It is. It, it gets into the nuances and the complexities of the question. It doesn't treat things in the way that modern history treats them, which is very cartoony, um, which I really appreciated. Uh, she seems to be pretty unbiased. She's, uh, for the most, and everyone's got a bias, but she's not taking sides really on any of the political things. Uh, it, she just wants to explain to you what Calhoun thought. The bias is, you know, what did Calhoun think about these things? Uh, a lot of histories talk about two Calhouns, that there's the Calhoun, the early Calhoun, who was for America, and then the Calhoun that was for the South, and um, and this is substantiated through the, his positions on different issues. However, she does not buy into that. Um, uh, the, usually in history books, there's this typical pick of Calhoun where he's dying of tuberculosis, and he's older, and he's got this kind of crazy, almost like Back to the Future doc hair, and he looks like this angry guy with the hollowed out eyes, and um, very serious, and and she shows she 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 talks about the Calhoun, that the young vibrant Calhoun, the Calhoun that was not dying of tuberculosis, and the handsome Calhoun, and um, and and she captures you know it's not the cartoon, it's the actual person, and and this Calhoun, there weren't two Calhouns, there was one Calhoun, and he can be explained, 
Uh, his positions do make sense if you understand the man first and then look at the issues um, that, that he supported. So I'm not going to go into to more of that now, but you, you, know, you can read the book if you want to find out. Uh, it's applicable. That's my third reason for reading it. I think it's applicable to America, to the United States of America. Uh, it shows how far we've drifted from the Constitution. I'll give you a couple examples. Uh, the National Bank. I mean, we got the Fed. We, we don't even, <laughs> as far as fiscal policy, this is not even a debatable issue anymore. But it wasn't Calhoun's day. It's important to know why uh, Calhoun and, and so many of the Democrats at the time were very suspicious of uh, a national bank. Um, uh, recent events even, uh, you know, was the last week, uh, Donald Trump shot some rockets into Syria. And um, uh, one of the big issues was the War of 1812 during Calhoun's time. But you needed congressional approval to participate in the war. And so con we don't even think about these things now. The president just does that kind of stuff. Um, or how about nullification? Um, it went from being mainstream, Calhoun being an ardent defender of nullification, um, because of uh, the tariff issue, to now it's fringe. It's not even talked about. It, it's just something that you you know you should be laughed out of the room if you talk about nullification. Uh, so those are just a couple examples, and and we're dealing with some of the same issues today, really at the core that Calhoun dealt with, like uh, competing economic interests, uh, and the, like uh, Henry Clay from Kentucky believed in the American system, and Daniel Webster kind of joined him on that because it. It benefited the, the Northeast. And the American system uh, today is, is, you know, that's infrastructure repairs and, and, and making the, the government, um, this, the, the federal government, um, through stimulus packages or, 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 you know, it doesn't even have to be stimulus package, but that prosperity is going to come from them building roads and, and, and bridges and um, doing infrastructure repairs, so forth and so on. And this idea versus localism. Calhoun was not someone who wanted the federal government to do these things. Now, he was a very forward-thinking guy. He wanted uh, railroads to come into South Carolina, and he, he was really a man ahead of his time on technology, yet uh, he, was, he could see the future, but he did not see the government as the federal government as the one that was supposed to be bringing in such a prosperity. And so you see that, that fight still going on today. Um, you see the South being used as the whipping boy still today as this kind of... Uh, uh, and nothing against people with red hair, but that the you know the freckled-faced, uh, red-haired cousin, you know, the South, and and um, and that's still happening. And, and Calhoun um, tried to unite the South to oppose uh, what he thought was inevitable, which would have been war, which happened after his death. Um, but you know, you see this, and and I just think there's so much to be said for Calhoun's work in. Um, his, his chief goal was to try to figure out a way to protect minorities within the country. He didn't want to have a, a, a separate South or, or to have secession. He wanted the United States to remain uh, united, but he, uh, he wanted it to be a constitutional uh, unification. So um, I admire the man. Uh, to me, uh, he, he died for a cause. You look in the last pages of his life, uh, he was dying, literally dying, trying to finish uh, his work, trying to finish a book and, and defending the South. And so, um, especially if you're a Southerner, I think you need to read this book, John C. Calhoun, American Portrait by Margaret L. Coit. So there you go.